And that, of course, creates its own problems for the riders. Stage 15 is just 118 kilometres, 78 kilometres shorter than yesterday's, with three climbs of increasing height and difficulty, a third, a second, and then first category to finish. Adam on Formigal is actually the highest point of this year's race at 10 metres under 1800. Not particularly steep, but with changing gradient. It's a stage designed to be raced fast if anyone is up to the challenge after yesterday. Naro Quintana's first task, as always, is to get safely out of the hotel and into the team bus, running the friendly gauntlet of Colombian fans, who then rush off to the Orica bus at the start to mob Esteban Chavez, now only two places behind Quintana, with his teammate Simon Yates right behind him. Do you stick or twist? Are you looking for more, or are you looking to protect yourselves from the likes of Contador and Koenig? Uh, I think we always got to look for more. If we didn't look for more right from the start, well, you wouldn't have achieved what we've achieved up until now. Uh, I think we've always just got to go about our work day by day. We've got to be conscious that, yeah, we did a great attack, we did a great tactical move yesterday, but you know, today another team might come back and do the same thing back to us again. We're conscious we're in a good, good position, we've always got to aspire to get better, and, uh, and who knows, you know, we've just got to uh, roll the cards, uh, roll, roll the dice, and, uh, and see what happens. And today's a very different stage, Neil, very short, 118 kilometres, long climbs, but not particularly steep climbs. What do you think will happen out there today? I think it's a bit of a, uh, a B section of the yesterday stage, you know. Uh, it's as if the, the stage sort of didn't finish yesterday. People are still a little bit fatigued from what we did, everyone did yesterday. I think I've got the faith to know that, uh, that everyone finished a bit on the limit as well yesterday, not only our team but the other teams. I'm sure that there's going to be a, a really fast start. It's going to be a great stage to watch once again on television. And uh, yeah, there might be, I don't see major differences in the finish, but who knows, maybe those uh, day after day racing, it's been a really hard world up until now, those fracture lines might show once again with uh, another GC contender. Well, there's the GC contender we usually look to to break the race apart, but Alberto Contador hasn't looked able so far. He was having a long chat with Alejandro Valverde at the start. And the yellow jerseys of Tinkoff were up front in numbers for the rollout, masked behind the car of the race director waiting for the flag to drop. Once the flag did drop, Chris Froome could be found perhaps untypically far back in the main field. No great danger in that, you might think, two kilometres into the race, but as is handily shown by the motorbike shot here, he was a good way behind Nairo Quintana, who was sitting right behind Alberto Contador. And not long after, the situation went from untypical to urgent, when the early attacks strung out the field, created splits, and a large group out front containing Quintana and Contador. Froome suddenly found himself having to dig deep and get across the gap himself. So barely six kilometres into the stage, and he's already having to work as we pick up commentary with Ned and David. What a nightmare start for Team Sky and the man in the white jersey, Chris Froome, chasing on like that, David, so early on the stage, barely six kilometres raced and already full stress. Well, it's the worst case scenario, you come into a stage, it looked like he was, seemed fairly relaxed about it all, starting quite near the back, as were his teammates, which is very unfamiliar from, uh, from Team Sky. But look at Alberto Contador, I mean, he's just, he's clearly, he's, see, he's seeing what's unfolding, he's realising that those, these, these attacks at the beginning are causing damage. And, and it's sometimes in these shorter stages where you can get away with this. And there's Nado Quintana moving up on the left. Well, I mean, it's been Tinkoff, hasn't it, R really, who've been active on the front all day. They're clearly pre-planned. I don't know whether they spotted that Team Sky were a little bit caught out of position there. But uh, Quintana is absolutely alert to this. Nothing's got away just yet, but fascinating to see the man at the front of the race at the moment is Alberto Contador. And typical of the man in a way but the question is where is Chris Froome why isn't he not moved up he's got to continue moving up he closed that gap before and now he's got to move up I mean we know this at this stage these are unclassified little clients but they're going to have a descent here it looks like it's quite technical and Alberto Contador he's attacking he's, a, he's <laughs> this is brilliant this is old school Contador we know he's capable of doing this at any any particular mountain stage he's chosen the shortest one in the race to do something I mean, if this breaks apart, then vital to, to Contador's ambitions today will be the composition of whatever group establishes itself. But, I mean, we're a long way from that just yet. Wherever Chris Froome is, he's going to need teammates now because he will have been uh, into the red slightly with that little chase, and these are urgent, it's an urgent look, situation. Look, this, is, this is a full-blown attack now from Alberto Contador. So he looked behind, he saw Gats, and he's looking there, he keeps checking, and it's possible as well. He's got a teammate behind that's saying, Chris Froome's far back, Chris Froome's back, go. Because they'll know that, and that's often what happens with teammates. And you can see, look at how it's stringing out behind. 
This is a, a very unorthodox move by Alberto Contador, but that's what we expect from him. Six riders back. There are three there, a little gap emerging, and then the sixth rider on the road is the red jersey, I think. And, or is that a Katusha rider? I think that's Quintana himself. Well, that I can't tell whether it's a Katusha or a... No, no, I can't tell yet. But we did see the shop saw for the before that it was... Oh, no, he's further back. So it's the next red that's rider right. we see. Yeah, yeah. Ninth so, wheel or something like that. There is Nairo Quintana just going around that bend now. So Contador and Quintana, and look at the gap that's opened up there. That is a group that has, at this point, gone clear. And the thing is, if you're caught behind, like Chris Rune clearly is, you can't move by. Look how technical this is. You have a slow rider in front of you opening gaps. There's nothing you can really do about it. So Alberto Consolador realizes this. I'm sure I'd, I'd love to know if he's been getting information from his teammates on the road, because the team cars at the moment will have no clue what's going on. They're scattered. It's already in pieces, the peloton. And now he's dragged away. It's hard to tell. Over 10 riders, that's for sure. And it looks as though a couple in this little group. Well, there's the chase group. And looking for signs of Chris Froome now in the white. Well, too distant to see. That's the front of it. That's David Lopez working on the front, and another team's got Salvio T Salvatore Puccio moving to the front as well. well Lucas in second position. It's Alejandro Valverde, so he's blocking. He knows Nairo Quintana's in that group ahead. It's a dream scenario for Movistar if they're up there, because that means they don't have to ride all day. Around about 20th uh, position in that group. I just caught a glimpse of the white jersey of Chris Froome, but he's got two teammates now, and uh, they can't allow this gap to grow any further than it has already. It's down to them. No other teams at the moment are going to help. Not just two riders from Sky. No, because Team Sky, uh, they have the second place rider in GC. Chris Froome, the leader in GC is up the road, so it's their responsibility to close this down, and they're going to need more than two riders. Well, uh, Alberto Contador, by the looks of it, has two teammates himself, so Tinkoff alone have three riders in this group, and there is the red jersey of Nairo Quintana. So Movistar, and I noticed that they, they've got at least one support rider there with Quintana as well, so already you can look, they've got strength in number here, and motivation, and the gap. There's the Team Sky train, the so two riders just trying to bring two versus Two riders versus two riders at the moment, because look, the Tinkoff, it's their, their mission now. Alberto Consolor has the most to gain at the moment. If it's just him and Nairo Quintana, the high place riders in GC, then he's going to do a massive jump up. If they, oh, look at this, it's slowing up. There's Puccio who can't, can't keep up the pace. They're, they need to put the hammer down here. They can't hesitate. And it doesn't look like I can't see any of the Sky Riders there. Well, there's a split, isn't there, in the peloton? You can see Chris Froome moving up on the outside there in the white jersey. And there's a further split. I mean, that peloton is bust into three or four distinct groups. And only two Sky Riders are alongside Chris Froome in this group. So where are the rest? I, I, I don't know what's going on here. This is they've been completely caught out. And they need to just close that gap, even if it means blowing themselves up for Lopez and, and Puccio. Their only job now is to get that gap. They don't need to pace it. It's 14 seconds. They've got to treat this as like a prologue effort and get them back. Just seen Chris Froome on the radio once and again. And uh, he's, what will he be asking? Where are the rest? What's going on? Where where are you all? That he probably will be, actually. He'll be calling them up. He won't know if there's any riders behind. He might have checked before. But it's in that group. It looks like he's only got two teammates. And uh, you can tell they're not even going that fast. The way everyone's kind of peeling off, looking behind. Now, here's a Movistar rider coming off to Erviti. It's Movistar, they're just going to block it. They just need to sit at the front, and if Team Sky asks for help, they just make sure no other teams come around them. It's a very subtle way of, of helping their team leader. And Alejandro Valverde in the green jersey as well, just there to disrupt things. And Alberto Contador continues to set the pace oh, out. Oh, two teammates from Movistar as well. So Alberto Contador has two teammates, Nara Quintana has two teammates. So that's four riders who have a vested interest in here to make this work, contrary the two, against the two riders from Team Sky who are chasing behind. So already they've got half the manpower behind. Ivan uh, Rovny and Yuri Trofimov, the two Tinkoff riders in that selection. And it looked like uh, Jonathan Castroviejo and Ruben Fernandez, himself a former red jersey on the Vuelta, are there for Movistar. So essentially, even, even though six riders in this much bigger group, that's a six-man team time trial, potentially. Now. It is, and it's a very strong group. I mean, these are all riders we've seen in breakaways on hard stages in uh, these, these, the previous two weeks of this race. So it's a group of the riders on form. And, and once that gap's formed, it's up to Movistar and Tinkoff now to make sure that gap sticks. And once that happens, if they can do it, then everyone, I, I think, and I believe everyone will start working because they've all got a vested interest in this. Nothing is done just yet. The gap's only 13, 14 seconds or something like that. But the signs are ominous, and there'll be abs there's absolutely no holding back from Team Sky, that pairing. And presumably Chris Froome will have to work uh, as well alongside... They just haven't got the numbers at the moment. Now, interestingly, there's a rider from Orica Bike Exchange, which would suggest that they yeah. will help. And they're the other big losers. We, do, we haven't seen Esteban Chavez or Simon Yates yet. There he is just behind Chris Froome, I think it's Esteban Chavez or Simon Yates. They look very similar on the bike. It's... 
they but look they need to be going hard on this it looks like they're just setting a gentle pace like they have everything under control that group ahead is lethal they need to bring that back there shouldn't be any hesitation or pacing at the moment and uh, perhaps he has to and once again the questions on the radio being asked what's going on behind i think is probably his primary concern he's only got two teammates there plus him that leaves another what five riders somewhat and there they are further back down the road michael goash christian knays uh, Who's that? Uh, is that Koenig and, and Pete Kenyuk? And again, it's all looking very relaxed. It looks, it's, it's you're almost treating it like, oh, it's star race, still a long way to go, let's just pace this. Swain Tuff moving up, probably trying to find out what's going on and watch that you should do. So, yikes, this is not in the ideal situation for Team Sky or Orica Bike Exchange. That's the third group on the road you're looking at. Ahead of them, though, a group containing Chris Froome is losing time with every passing kilometre to Nairo Quintana and Alberto Contador. Six kilometres or thereabouts from the top of the second climb of the day. And for the first time in quite a while, this huge advantage that this lead group containing Nairo Quintana and Alberto Contador, in which they've exploded the Vuelta, essentially, for the first time, we're beginning to see sustained losses. And that is because, even though Chris Froome in the white jersey is isolated and has no teammates, he has now called on the help of Orica Bike Exchange and Astana who are working and it's a good job too because as I've said Chris Froome in the white jersey today has no teammates David Lopez was the last of his domestiques to pull very very hard and then pop off the front as you could only understand and expect but prior to that more than half his team were stranded in the third group on the road and pretty soon even though they chased hard Ian Boswell and the rest of them just sat up and threw in the towel leaving their leader in this perilous position in which he might be watching his Vuelta go up in smoke that's a situation Situation, though, they're on the second climb of the day and Orica Bike Exchange, David, have made a little bit of an impression for the first time on this group of 14. Well, they have done. They let uh, Lopez for Team Sky ride until he was exhausted. They let Astana do the same. BMC even for a little bit contributed. And once all those riders were used up, they hit this climb and that's when they used up the last two riders they had. Kukulea and Damien Houston, who's on the front, who's just doing his final effort. Now we see it coming down to 237, 238. He really was lifting up the pace. But He's only got, he'll only have a couple of a couple of kilometers maybe left doing that, and we could sense that. We saw Eviti, we saw other riders getting dropped off, and we also saw Chris Froome move himself up into fourth position in that line, and, and Esteban Chavez was in second. So they obviously sense the pace lifting, they can sense something happening. But for Damien Housen now, the most important thing is for him to make it through his plateau, as we see here. This is the plateau before the final part of the climb. He doesn't want to explode before that, because otherwise that leaves no room for Chavez to attack. He, he, he needs to be going uphill when Chavez attacks. So, so he's got a bit of a job ahead of him now, Housen. He's got a good last do at least another five minutes on the front and it's i get the sense that he's already peaking out now the maximum time gap and it's beginning to go out again did get over three minutes before orica bike exchange brought it back a little bit on this climb as you can see it's starting to drift out again i'm, tr I'm trying to imagine situations in which chris Froome and for that matter simon yates and esteban chavez can rescue the situation david do they have to go it alone or do they have to bring it somehow bring it close enough with the help of Astana and maybe BMC to ignite the interest of other teams like BMC, Lampre Merida and AG Tuala Mondial who don't have riders in this group but still have plenty of horsepower in that chase group. Uh, well they can't go alone individually ideally what you do is if you're Chris Room completely isolated now you'd go and speak to the other riders who who are in the same situation as you. You need, to, you need a, a group of riders who are strong and have the same vested interest to, to make this work. So that would be, he'd go and speak to Esteban Chavez, Simon Yates, the AG2R riders, and, and say, look, I'm gonna go, you're gonna come with me. Even BMC, I think Sonny Sanchez is there. But the problem they have is there are riders that will come with them. It's the Movistar riders, they're strong enough, got Moreno there in fourth place, Valverde, who's been looking strong earlier, although off GC now, thanks to his explosion yesterday, seems to be back on top form again today, so he obviously just had an off day. He's going to come with them and just sit on and attack the moment they show weakness. So, but, so hence why you have to time the attack for Chavez, Chris Froome, Simon Yates et al. For the moment, they, they know they can take it to the finish line. To try and make a case for this group to come back, you also need a bit of disruption within this, the, the cooperation up front. And we did just catch a glimpse of Dirk de Mol, the director sportif from Trek Segafredo, talking to Fabio Fellini. Now, he's one of a handful of riders, including the Cannondale Drapak riders here, who are only interested in stage victory. And at some points, 
if they start to sense that that gap has gone and is unassailable, they'll stop working and contributing and they will start to sit on and that might just put a, a little spanner in the works. Yeah, it might do. I think the only thing that's going to affect it now is just general fatigue setting in this group. They've been going flat out as a 14-man 14, 14 group, rolling through con consistently, and you can see some of the grimaces there. They're, they're really going to start to be affected, and that's going to, that will start to affect it because it'll start to break up slightly. You'll have guys sitting on. People start to question why they're sitting on. But there are a few riders there that aren't going to hesitate. That's the Tinkoff riders and the Movistar riders. They're fully committed. Omar Frail as well. He's trying to chase the, the mountain points again. Your Elisond. But for a rider like Fellini, it's going to be very difficult for him to try and win this stage. So it's, it's possible that he's, he's just working out of respect for these big riders. Maybe he's friends with them, and I, but sometimes that will happen. Meanwhile, further down the road in 2 minutes 40, back down the road, Damien Hausen continues his lone suffering at the front from Orica Bike Exchange. He has Esteban Chavez on his wheel, the white jersey of Chris Froome, and behind them, well, a mixture of Movistar riders who are just trying to disrupt things. BMC, who might be useful, ultimately, if this does start to come back together again. And Simon Yates is still in this group as well. You can see him just popping out on the, uh, in about 10th or 11th position. Just occurred to me as well, actually, about Fabio Fellini, why he'd be riding when he really hasn't got much to gain from this. So it's already amazing he's in this group. Uh, he is Trek Segafredo, and that's the team that Alberto Contador is going to next year. So as Pospa Dirk de Mol said, let's do this. Fraile starts this climb, and he's eight uh, points behind Kenny Elisson. Meanwhile, the gap is beginning to come down. Let's talk about that in a second. But Fraile, well, he closes the gap further. He moves to 48 points now and to... Kelly S. Elisand is on 54, so just six points separating the two of them, with 10 available for the winner at the finish line. Chris Froome grabs uh, Musette a bag, and he's going to need that. He's got no one, uncharacteristically for Team Sky, to do this work for him today and to hand him the uh, nutrition, the energy he's going to need. There is the man who's done all that work to set up that attack. That's Damien House, and he's going backwards fast, just losing contact completely with that group, and he'll just be riding... On his own now, for the time being, absolutely burning. What a huge effort that was. He was on the on the front for, what, six, seven kilometres of that 12 and a half kilometre climb. So Orica Bike Exchange have made a decision. They've made a decision that Simon Yates is going to ride primarily, do the work first for Esteban Chavez. Yep. So, and you have to do that. You can't protect both of them. At some point, they had to discuss with each other. They had to discuss with their direct sportive from the road and go, OK, I'll do this. And so Simon Yates has taken that role. Sammy Sanchez is there, Michele Scarponi has made that selection, Alejandro Valverde in the green jersey, Louis Meinke. So the rest of that Lampre Merida train has been blown off the back and uh, there are only about seven or eight riders able to live with the pace that Simon Yates has injected into the race and they are heading pretty soon towards the top of that climb too. So Yates might well have uh, done a bit of damage here and he might well be closing the gap and bringing it into that zone where it becomes credible again, where the chase is believed in and that will motivate the rest of that group they bring over the top. And one man has done that to that group. One man has blown apart that huge chase group containing Chris Froome, Chavez and Simon Yates. And he's the one who has done all the damage. Suddenly, they go into a tunnel and the race enters a new phase. 40 kilometres to go and it's become fascinating in an entirely new and different way as Simon Yates explodes the chase. Fifteen kilometres of this fascinating stage left. The gap is two minutes and 18 seconds. Astana are working at the front. Chris Froome in the white jersey sitting back. Simon Yates and Esteban Chavez lit things up briefly, brought it to within about one minute 45. It has, though, since gone out. Interestingly, at 28.5 kilometres remaining and on stage 15 of the Vuelta, we saw the first contested intermediate sprint. And it came, obviously, from the lead group and Alberto Contador crossed the line in first place and picked himself up three bonus seconds. He started the day on 3 minutes 28 seconds down in GC. He's now 3.25, which means that he's got to make up 2 minutes and 31 seconds on Chris Froome if he wants to finish the day, potentially, in second place. Simon Yates, last time we saw him, was way further down the line, as he often is. He often sits back and you see him come to the front, and often with devastating consequences. And... Um, 
we have seen an indication that Yates might well sacrifice himself today, to a certain extent at least, for Esteban Chavez, so don't rule that out. The gap coming down to close to two minutes, 12.7 kilometres of climbing remaining. This uh, climb goes up and down, ramps off, has a, a flatter section in the middle, and then the final three and a half K are pretty sustained and uh, sort of eight, nine percent gradients. So the steeper part still to come. The average gradient of this climb, 4.6%. Luis Leon Sanchez for Astana brings the gap to under two minutes for the first time since Simon Yates got on the front over the top of the penultimate climb. So it's still in the balance. There's still 11 kilometres of climbing to go, but you, uh, it's odds on the winner of the stage comes from this group, surely, and Naira Quintana would be your banker. Well, it's interesting. I think we just saw Naira Quintana and Alberto Contador give a little nod to each other so they both got their domestics uh, on the front again it looks like they might have asked them for their final effort to go look i know you're tired but this is it give me as far as you can go as fast as you can go and then they'll launch off that rather than just keep kind of sitting there at a slower pace as they're getting dropped is you, you that's normally what you do you go look I, and it, also the fact that when alberto contador waved him back no doubt alberto contador has done reconnaissance of the stage knows his climb perhaps he knew it was going to level off a bit like this and said look just go now and do this last bit Meanwhile, Chris Froome sits on the wheel of Jean-Christophe Perrault from AG to Alain Mondial, one of three riders who may come into play for him. But one thing's clear, at some point, Froome is going to have to replicate the kind of contribution to this race that Alberto Contador and Naira Quintana have been showing all day, and he's going to have to lead from the front. He's going to have to go on his own. Trough him off. He's gone. Uh, Ivan Rovny still there, the last of the domestiques for um, Quintana and Contador. Frail is losing contact with that group a little bit, and now the attacks come. And it looked like Quintana had moved off the front of that group. Um, we just caught a glimpse of it, so it'll be interesting to see what's going on up there. Luis Leon Sanchez again. Off the front. Well, this group is a mess. Chris Freeman, it's Chris Freeman and Chavez, they need to move when. Yes, it is Naira Quintana who's moving now. He's, he's, and it's, uh, where is Alberto Contador sitting there? Yeah, I think it's in Naira Quintana's interest now, if he's feeling good, not to really question the fact he might lose the stage, but just ride for GC, keep it constant, because if he, he'll be getting told on the radio that it's falling to pieces behind, that, it's, uh, that they're stalling. So all that work today, as you said before, Ned, there's no point in letting it slip now. They should just, Alberto Contador and Naira Quintana, they should almost work as teammates and ride together to get this to the finish line and not worry about the stage one in the slightest. That's what they've been doing all day. That is exactly what they've been doing. And that group is now half the size that it was. Kenny Ellison has made the selection. The two riders from Etix Quickstep are still there. So too brilliantly is Fabio Fellini, not a pure climber at all. And Mamikin hanging on to the back. K uh, Kenny Ellison, the rider in fourth place, the tiny rider in the King of the Mountains competition, has dispensed with the threat that was posed by Omar Freyli. And all things being equal, assuming Ellison doesn't crack, uh, and don't forget, he finished second on yesterday's mountain top finish. Um, Elisand will be the king of the mountains and will extend his lead. Very interesting. There's a bit of a wind blowing. It's a block headwind here. So that, again, will be one of the reasons it will be stalling behind because you can see how it's quite a, a strong headwind on a climb like this that does have its sections where it is quite, quite fast. So you do get a lot of rest if you're sitting on the wheel, if you can hold it. Should the race finish now, Quintana would have something like just under a three-minute advantage over Chris Froome. He has identified that as uh, the crucial barrier that he will need to defend against Chris Froome in the time trial. Now, there may be some hyperbole in that, a bit of bluff, but that's an interesting psychological point, at least, to note. And now Chris Froome is, gets onto the front, and uh, this is, we've reached this point with Val Val Valverde on his wheel where the man in the white jersey is just going to have to ride everyone off his wheel if he can and close the gap on his own. And that's one of the first times all day we've actually seen Chris Froome at the front. So, so this is it now. He needs to stay on there and, and not get annoyed or frustrated by riders sitting on his wheel. Now look at Nader Quintana. He really is pushing forward. He asks occasionally, but, uh, but not with absolute <laughs> commitment. He is, it seems to be fairly resigned to his fate here. In which case, now, uh, Alberto Contador is, is playing off that quite well, because maybe Alberto Contador is really interested in the stage. Now, Chris Froome, interestingly, isn't looking very... The, the, the Chris Froome of yesterday, where he was so dominant, really did play games with uh, Nader Quintana. He doesn't seem fully in control here. You would have thought he'd just clip off the front or just slip into TT mode and ride people off his wheel. And he's suggesting that everyone works together, but we've been through this. I mean, that's the dozenth time he's had to ask that very question. And now kind of goes, so they've seen an opportunity. Talansky's being led out. Okay. Davide Vellella doing the work for him. And, uh, yeah, how does he respond to Chris Froome? What, what shape is he in? It's Ben King. Ben King. So, uh, he's, he's, look, the acceleration is pretty strong for Chris Froome, but not that. Look, Scarponi's coming over the top of him. 
Interesting. Yeah, I think maybe Chris Freeman is having a bit of a bad day today. And look at Nairo Quintana going. That's completely different. Look at the attitude in this group to that group behind. Well, Quintana is doing the job of a domestique, except he's doing it in the leader's jersey, and he's dragging with him a bunch of opportunists who have clung on some of the strongest men in this bike race, all of them, with the exception possibly of Alberto Contador, believing that they can win the stage. For Quintana, though, it's about delivering the most telling blow in the Vuelta to date on stage 15. Six kilometres remaining. Five kilometres to go for Nairo Quintana in the red leader's jersey. He has Mamikin on his wheel, Alberto Contador gritting his teeth once again and making gains in the general classification. There they go, and 5K separates Nairo Quintana from a significant moment in his Vuelta. Further down the road, Chris Froome has finally decided to take the responsibility all on his own and has given up on, hope, on any hope that he'll get any help from anyone else. And the man in the white jersey is battling to try and get across this gap, but making no inroads, and his body language is very questionable, David. And look at Alejandro Valverde sitting on his wheel as Nairo Quintana's domestique. So the moment that Chris Froome flicks his elbow or pulls off, Alejandro Valverde will do nothing. And, and that's why resounding he nothing as a yeah. response. <laughs> Just blocking. So this is a time when Esteban Chavez and Simon Yates need to come up there and, and become teammates of Chris Froome. The three of them need, now need to work together to, to limit the loss because the podiums, for all three of those riders, their podiums now at risk. Well, that's a whole uh, set of circumstances we hadn't anticipated. The fact that Chris Froome might lose time to both Yates and Chavez. He's certainly losing time to Nairo Quintana. Chris Froome closing a gap again. He finds himself in this situation over and over again today. We've seen this since the beginning where he's closing gaps. So he drops back, the race accelerates in front, and he finds himself being the one that has to close it again. And all that energy that's being wasted. Well, he's closing the gap to the wheel of Esteban Chavez. Simon Yates is uh, also caught out the wrong side of that little gap, and Chris Froome has closed it. And Astana restore order on the front. Talansky's looking very strong today in the company of Ben King. Let's go back up to the front of the road, and uh, you can still see the red jersey of Nairo Quintana having the ride of his life in such different circumstances. Never seen him done this, do this before on a Grand Tour or any kind of bike race, lead from the front like this, because, frankly, he's never been in this position. This is a very unusual situation on a Grand Tour, to have a group of this talent just rip the race apart and stay away perfectly. It's worked out perfectly so far for Contador and Quintana. And because he's in such a strong position and he's racing solely a GC race, he doesn't have to play games and attack them and distance them. He's happy for them to sit in his wheel and just... Because, let's face it, they've contributed all day to him as well, so there's no point in him attacking them. That would be a show of disrespect, and he doesn't need to because none of them are, are currently a risk. It's only Alberto Contador, and he's going to be minutes behind in whatever happens. Well, once again, a little gap opens up, and Chris Froome is definitely struggling here. The form has deserted him temporarily. The legs are empty. The efforts that he's had to throw down repeatedly today are beginning to pay. He just looks spent. And this is number 59, Simon Yates. He's sitting there. He's seeing this happen. Look how cool he is just sitting there waiting. Now, if he is feeling good, and that would be a bit of a surprise, actually, to be honest, because he did that mammoth effort yesterday in the last 40 kilometers of the race, a solo time trial for 40 kilometers at the end of one of the biggest mountain stages of the whole race. So it would be surprising if he does have some left in the tank. Mamakin loses a bit of contact with that front group and uh, the little gap opens up as well to the Cannondale Drapak rider Davide Formolo. Looks like David de la Cruz is caught out a little bit as well and so too and this isn't perhaps surprising Fabio Fellini as Contador and Quintana take Brambilla and Kenny Elisande with them. That group of four appears to be getting away although David de la Cruz is just latching onto the back of it. Etix Quickstep have two riders in this selection. That's a great ride by De La Cruz again. Alberto Contador, no, as, as Scarpa only has to go now. So Luis Leon Sanchez did his work. He's just exploded. Look at that. He's just stopped that going out. There he is on the right of the screen. So he's done what we've seen so many of the teammates do today. Froome is uh, cracking here. There's no doubt about it. Simon Yates is coming alongside him. And uh, I wonder what his game plan is. Esteban Chavez, me in the meantime, was looking much fresher, and he has attacked or reacted to that big move by Michele Scarponi. So Chavez will be gaining time on his teammate Simon Yates and on Chris Froome. Meanwhile, uh, that is the group of three at the front of the race. So 7 or 8% here, the climb, so it stays essentially like this to the finish line. You can see it's a smaller road now, so it's quite consistent, contrary to the rest of this mountain they've done. Here's the Chris Froome group, so they're, they're effectively about the fourth group on the road. There's a little group in front of them, then in front of that as well will be the group with Esteban Chavez. So it's in pieces now. 
Yeah, this is the group just in front of uh, Chris Froome. It contains the green jersey of Alejandro Valverde. Cracked, lost nearly 11 minutes yesterday. I think he's got Jean-Christophe Perrault for company. I think it looks like Contador's just losing contact now with Gianluca Brambilla and beginning to pay for his efforts. And Brambilla is doing brilliantly to hold the wheel of Quintana here, who's just having the ride of his life. Oh, this is impressive. I might this pressure is just to say the least by Naida Quintana. He's done this on his whole climb on his own the last 10 Ks or so, just sitting there on the front and he's winding it up more and more and everyone's getting blown off his wheel one by one. It's not been any real big explosion. It's just been a slowly deterioration of this group. Six seconds in the gap between this pair and uh, Alberto Contador who is finally going backwards. So I think they're actually missing a group from there because there should be a group three which has Chavez, Chavez Scarponi Correct. and a few other riders in there. So that's not completely the, the Full, full race situation at the moment. But now Chris Froome again has come to the front with Simon Yates in his wheel, George Bennett in third place, and Ben Hermans in fourth. But up ahead, you can just see the fastest man on the road at the moment is Nido Quintana. What a contrast with yesterday. When these two, uh, Chris Froome and Nido Quintana, rode up alongside each other, and, and uh, Quintana was almost made to be humbled by Chris Froome on that occasion. He attacked him five times, Froome reacted every single time, rode up alongside him as Contador is passed by Kenny Elisande and by uh, Fabio Fellini, and he's just hurting now and just wants to get to, to the end and uh, see what comes out the other, the other end, so to speak, in terms of time gains on all those rivals. But... I mean, it's just li night and day, the contrast between Quintana of today as he goes through one kilometre and the Quintana of yesterday. And uh, what has happened to Chris Froome and his team on today's stage? It has been a complete disaster for them on the world. Well, I think Quintana's very similar to what he was yesterday. It's just that it's Chris Froome who's having the, the bad day. Like Valverde yesterday, obviously, to not, not that scale. But Alberto Conto is battling on. I think he tried, went so deep trying to stay with Nader Quintana that he, he had an explosion and it's taken him about a kilometre to recover slightly. Fellini and Ellison, who we saw back there, they're looking good. Now Chris Froome's accelerated. He's trying to... That looks more like the Chris Froome we, we're familiar with on climbs. But uh, it's... it's it's too late. It is too late. It might be too late for Simon Yates as well, who's just sitting on the wheel of Chris Froome, can't respond. Ben Hermans is there. But um, perhaps if he digs in, he can uh, hold on to second place. It's looking that way, actually, just about, because uh, Con Alberto Contador is beginning to suffer and losing time. 24 seconds to the red jersey. So Chris Froome's only two minutes on the road behind Alberto Contador, which would just about keep him in second place on the day. But the battle for the podium might be very interesting. I think the red jersey, though, at the end of the day might be gone, even with Chris Froome's time trial and the climb still to come on this Vuelta. Nairo Quintana could be within touching distance of the overall win in Madrid this time next week. Can we say that? Is it too early? And the fluctuations and the, uh, the changes of fortune on this welter, you cannot be certain of absolutely anything. Valverde on a bad day yesterday, on a good day today. Froome on a brilliant day yesterday, on a terrible day today. Quintana on the day of his life on this mountaintop finish. He hasn't shaken off Gianluca Brambilla. He's dragged him up to the finishing line. I think that's going to be a secondary concern, though, to the red jersey of Nada Quintana. Gianluca Brambilla for Etix Quickstep will take this win. And after Gianni Meersman and David de la Cruz, another Etix Quickstep rider makes their mark and takes the stage victory. But he sat on the wheel of Nairo Quintana, who did all the work, and comes over the line in second place. And we start the clock to see what damage he does to everybody else. That was an amazing ride by Nairo Quintana. It was amazing, especially when he says Fellini now on his more familiar ground, sprinting. That's a quite a, a stunning ride from him today to be up there on once I mean look it's a, this goes to show that short stages sometimes can be the best they've not been racing three hours and it's destruction Fellini in third place over the line in fourth place Kenny Ellison the king of the mountains extends his lead in that competition David de la Cruz coming over next and uh and there is Alberto Contador 30 seconds down on the time of uh Nido Quintana Let's keep a uh, watch to see how many seconds behind Chris Froome comes over the line as uh, Davide Formolo does battle against the clock. He's not going to pull off the stage win that he's been threatening today, but he'll go another day, and he did very well to make the selection in that big group. As uh, Esteban Chavez, the mystery man, he's had another good day today, and he will be improving his time against his teammate Simon Yates and significantly as well against Chris Froome, but losing time to both Contador and uh, Nairo Quintana. He's wrestled definitive leadership of Orica Bike Exchange GC Challenge, and he is looking at uh, consolidating his podium position. Let's have a look when he stops the clock, what the time gaps are. It's 1.49 back from the time of, uh, of Nida Quintana. Now, 
Where is Chris Froome going to finish? He is in the barriered section now as riders continue to pile over the line. But all eyes on the white jersey, really. That's, Mani uh, that's Mamikin coming over the line. Alejandro Valverde, Omar Freire. So they're the leftovers from the breakaway. Alejandro Valverde's moved up. And there's Chris Froome coming through now. Well, uh, Nilo Quintana came over the line two minutes and 20 seconds ago, which means that uh, one minute and 50 seconds um, is the gap between him and uh, Alberto Contador. So I think Chris Froome on this showing is going to just about hang on to his second place in the general classification. He did not give up. He's had a battle all day, but in the end, in the final few kilometers, when he took responsibility, he did all that he could. Right, let's confirm the time gaps first, which all have a three-second offset in terms of the overall standing, since that was how far behind Brambila Nairo Quintana was. Alberto Contador lost 31 seconds to Quintana on the final climb, but gained much more on his rivals. Esteban Chavez was ninth, a minute 50 behind Quintana, 1.19 from Contador. Chris Froome came in 2 minutes 37 down on Quintana, 2.06 on Contador. Simon Yates was 7 seconds behind him. Chris, that stage started badly after eight kilometres when Alberto Contador went away and there were no sky riders in it. What was your view of the attack? Yeah, tough, tough stage for us, obviously. Um, the guys did a lot of work yesterday, so we weren't, I think, weren't as prepared as uh, some of the other teams this morning. Obviously, getting caught out there with uh, Contador and Quintana in that early, early break, that put us on the back foot and we just never never recovered. So, I mean, credit, credit to them. They rode a, a really smart race and... Um, yeah, they've, they've gained a lot, a lot of time today on, that, on us. Chris Froome was the only Sky rider in the first 71 today. In fact, his teammates all came in outside the time limit, most of them over 53 minutes down, and would have been eliminated from the race if the group they were in hadn't comprised nearly 60% of the field. Hi, Chris, it's crazy. You work so hard for everything, and yeah, I heard think Froome lost two and a half minutes to Quintana today, and... You know, you saw yesterday we went blow for blow and put the whole team on the front and rode hard and, you know, then something like this, just in 8K, the race just was turned upside down and we yeah, have to go back and see what happens now. But, yeah, it's just, it's crazy, you know, and Koning dropped from fourth to um, who knows where now and it's, it's just like, yeah, just a bit disappointing. But uh, that's bike racing, you know, we were just, we were just caught off guard at the beginning. Había eh, tres corredores de Movistar en la excavada. Eh, ¿Significa que para vosotros no ha sido una sorpresa el ataque de, de Alberto? No, no, no. Es, estábamos un poco preparados para ellos. Éramos conscientes del de peligro que entrañaba esta salida. Y, y bueno, pues, pues eh, es más, teníamos otro corredor más. Estaba también errada, pero ha tenido, ha pinchado y... Sometimes you've got to take your hat off to people and just say well done. And it was a brave move and, and it paid off um, for, for Nairo and Alberto. And, and we just got to sit there and say, okay, let's have a look at it and keep on going. And, and, and sometimes in sport, you take a punch in the face. Well, you know, you turn around and you say, right, okay, dust yourself down. And six days left of racing. We're still in the same position as we were this morning and um, well, we'll keep on going. Now, Gianluca Brambilla not only finished today's stage off, he kicked it off too with the very first attack at the flag drop. His reward, sadly for him, is to be a bit of a footnote at the end of the day, since the consequences of what he started became so big. And for no one more than Nairo Quintana, still the race leader and massively more secure in that position than he was this morning. Estoy hablando con el ganador de la Vuelta 2016. Bueno, eh... Eh, yo lo escuché que sea así, hemos trabajado fuerte, hoy salió una gran etapa, cuando menos lo esperábamos eh, se ha sacado más diferencia que en las grandes montañas. Cuéntanos cómo se ha cocinado todo esto, si quieres. Bueno, de salida se ha hecho el corte, eh, una salida muy difícil donde se sufría mucho y el castigo de ayer se notaba. Y supimos sufrir al comienzo, nos fuimos con Alberto, él junto con su equipo, con mi equipo, tiramos para adelante. Y la verdad que mi equipo me ayudó muchísimo. Una labor muy grande de Jonathan Castro Viejo, una labor muy grande de Rubén Fernández. Y luego por detrás eh, el, el resto de equipo pues cuidando de, de lo que pasaba en la parte de atrás. Hemos abierto hueco, hemos abierto hueco, hemos mantenido y la subida final eh, sabía que era una lucha contra contra el tiempo y para dejar atrás a Froome. Are you still in the fight for this for this welter overall? 
Oh, I mean, it's going to—it's it's definitely made it a lot more harder, a lot more hard now. Um, a minute was manageable. Three minutes is going to be extremely tough, but um, stranger things have happened, and yeah, going to keep fighting all the way. His declaration that he needed three minutes on Chris Froome to feel safe in the time trial seemed like an exaggeration when he said it. Whether it was or not, he's now got three minutes 37. Esteban Chavez is still third, 20 seconds behind Froome, but only five seconds ahead of Alberto Contador, who takes fourth place from Simon Yates by a minute and five seconds. Doubtless, there are still twists to come in this welter, but it would take a big one now to deprive Nairo Quintana of first place in Madrid.